I'm Diane Resignola, and in conjunction with Nary Streetwise, I'm here today with Remel Rangersman, Partner, Tax Transactions and Consulting at Mayor Brown. Remel, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you, Dan? Can you tell me a bit about Mayor Brown's REIT group? So Mayor Brown has been active in, in the REIT sector for over four years. Um, the firm has advised uh, uh, many different clients on structuring, organizing, and capitalizing REITs. Um, these, these include public REITs, private REITs, um, uh, equity REITs, mortgage REITs, uh, and we have basically all the needed experience at the, at the firm. We've got capital markets lawyers, uh, 40 Act lawyers, we've got uh, tax experts and, and uh, real estate experts. And recently we've expanded the capital markets group. Uh, we welcomed David Fried in New York as a partner. Uh, he's a very dynamic, forward-thinking uh, lawyer who, who represents mortgage REITs, equity REITs, and, and investment banks. So uh, it's a very comprehensive uh, uh, REIT group at the firm here. How did the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act implemented by the prior administration affect your clients? I guess the TCGAA, as it's called, um, uh, had, had a number of significant uh, tax changes, uh, including respect to REITs. Um, it, it implemented a 20% uh, deduction for qualified business income, which benefits uh, REIT investors. It, um, the, the laws as a whole had a, a implemented a limitation on interest expense, but uh, a REIT can elect out of that, which is beneficial for REITs. The law also uh, lowered corporate income tax rates uh, from, I guess it was 35% before to down to 21. That benefits taxable REIT subsidiaries or, or REITs that might have a little bit of tax to pay. Um, and then in addition, like-kind exchanges, it was, it was paired back for personal property, but not for real estate. So for real estate, so the like-kind exchange rules uh, are still in play. Uh, on the on the on the detrimental side, the the law restricted the use of net operating losses uh, as a whole, not just for REITs, but it, it obviously impacts REITs to the extent they have a loss. Of, and I think uh, the the reduction in the corporate income tax rates somewhat reduced the benefits of REITs as compared to taxable C corporations. There's still a benefit, it just reduced the benefit because the rate came down from 35, the tax rate came down from 35 to 21. Although the current administration is signaling they would like the tax rate to go back up to 28%, which would you know, further benefit the REITs again. And lastly, do you have any particular expectations of the current new administration as to REITs? As I mentioned, uh, yeah, so they're looking to increase the, the, the tax rate uh, from the corporate tax rate from 21 to 28 uh, percent. In addition, we are we are looking at, or, or the administration has indicated, are looking at an infrastructure bill. Uh, the real question is going to be whether that bill, anything related to infrastructure, would further expand REIT uh, assets and REIT income, the, the things that are eligible to be put into a REIT. Uh, one can imagine that a, an expansion of those rules would make uh, REIT capital available uh, as a source for infrastructure spending, which, which could be quite um, helpful and powerful. In addition, a bill was has already been introduced in, in Congress that um, is helpful on the related party rent front. And the goal of that bill is really for uh, for REITs to be able to financially help tenants, specifically in the retail industry, kind of where the focus is. Um, so we'll see where, where that bill uh, goes, but, but it looks like there will certainly be some activity in, in the REIT space uh, under the new administration. Remo, thank you so much for your time today. For more from Nay REITs REITWISE, visit REIT.com.